In this video I'll show you how to build a complete content inventory using URL Profiler. We'll start by opening up the software and then we need to populate our URL list. So I'll right click and choose import from XML sitemap. And I'll just paste in the URL Profiler sitemap and that will import all the URLs. So equally you could import uh, screaming frog crawl data or you could import using a CSV and merge or any other um, export you've got such as from a, a CMS. So all you need to do is try and get all your URLs in there. So sitemaps a good way, good quick way to get all of that in. So now we need to select some data and because we're just checking on one domain we're only really interested in the URL level data and down. So what we're going to choose is Majestic that will give us link metrics. We're going to choose um, Google Analytics to give us user data. So if you've not connected to Google Analytics you can do that here. And then you just need to make sure you've got the right account, property and view that you're interested in. We'll look just for from the last month and we'll pick for search traffic. So you can choose any segment you want um, from the predefined options. So once you apply that, that's Google Analytics chosen. So we'll also choose social shares and we'll want HTTP status and robots. And we will get screen captures so we can see what the data is going to, what pages look like. Um, we could also perhaps do with a landscape uh, tablet option. And we'll apply that as well. And mobile friendly, mobile page speed, desktop page speed, readability, and U classifier. So, what I'll do is I'll run the profile and then We'll look through the data and explain where all this data is coming in the export and, and what it all means. So we'll start the profiler running now. Okay, so the profile is finished running now. You can see from up here that it's taken 17 minutes and 25 seconds. So we can have a look at the results by just clicking to open file, which will come straight into Excel. So if you scroll right, you'll see there is an enormous amount of data to get to work with, which just shows how detailed the content audit can be. So if I open up the URL column a little, and we can just freeze the panes there so we can see what's going on. And I'll just bold this heading column. So there will obviously be some data which isn't necessarily useful which you, you might want to get rid of, such as the domain. It's all obviously going to be the, the same domain, unless you've put any subdomains in there, and the root domain will be the same because you're just doing content order on a single site. But I'll scroll across and we'll start digging into the data. So we've got the HTTP status column here, which will show you if there are any redirects. Um, it will tell you, and uh, it will tell you the original URL and the redirected URL as well. And obviously, if there's any 404s or any of that, there's other status codes we don't appear to have any, which is good. Uh, you have the content type and the content length, and then the type of encoding and the char set. So some of these bits of information you won't necessarily use for a content audit, but like I say, if you do need them, they're there. If you don't, you can just ignore them or get rid of them. Okay, so the screen capture path, which will tell you exactly where your screen captures have gone. So if I just minimize this for a second, you'll see that in addition to the export file, we've also got this export folder, which if we open that up, it's got all the screen captures we requested in there. So we can go through these um, and you can quickly see how well they're rendering, how well pages are rendering on mobile, if the content's there for desktop, and how it looks on tablet as well, because those were the options we selected. And hopefully we might find some examples of pages which haven't got a lot of content on it. There you go, it's a great one. There's an example of a page which we need to go and fix. So using the screen captures in this way can help you figure out pages that just have a really small amount of content on. Um, alongside perhaps something like a word count, which we'll get to later. Um, you, can use, you can use this sort of feature to figure out if the content is rendering as you would expect. And if there's a content there in the first place. So that's the screen capture part and the path is just listed there. As we scroll along right we're going to get into the readability options that we ticked. So there's some more basic um, ba basic bits of data that you, you might expect such as the title and the title length 
uh, you can see how that's coming through and if you scroll along further we don't actually for a lot of pages we don't have descriptions in um, but where they are in you can see them I'm just going to zoom out a second so we can move this over and again you've got the description length so uh, there's some in there so um, pages that do have descriptions you'll get you'll get the meta description and the description length and then we've got the word count on the page so sorting this type of uh, data set by something like word count will show you if you've got any thin pages which this these will be the um, the screen capture pages we looked at earlier those old documentation pages which we need to update or remove so we've also got the sentence counts, header counts, and uh, things like reading time, which is just an estimated reading time based on the word count. So again, um, any pages with low word count are going to have a low reading time as well. Uh, then we come on to uh, these different words here, which basically uh, reflect the uh, most common words found on the page. So um, it can give you a, a kind of rough idea of what a page might be about. And then there's sentiment scores, you know, neutral, positive, or negative, and there's all lots of different types of reading scores. Um, you've got data on the number of images here, images with alt tags and without alt tags, number of videos, external links, internal links on the page, um, total links on the page. We also do have the author links if there are any that can be found. Um, so all of that that we've just been through there is the readability section and then we move on to uClassify. So uClassify is a, I see that page did not work, but if you look, let's just scroll through these and you'll see um, that all of the uh, pages have been classified using uClassify's public classifier service. So most of them seem pretty accurate computers business science um considering it's a it's a software website um that seems to have classified them pretty well so again the uh, classification through you classify can give you a good idea of what a page is about topically then as we move along we have um the google analytics data so all of these ones with ga at the start they're all google analytics data so Let's just sort these and find some more interesting pages. Um, so we'll sort them by geo users. And as you can see, this is just a search traffic segment. So if we open these up a bit, you can see the data that's coming back. You've got users, new users, then sessions, percentage of new sessions. There's also engagement with metrics coming back, bounce rate, um, there's page views, there's average time on page. So you can kind of go through and slice and dice this data however you have you ever you see fit. If you think there's an issue with engagement, perhaps you can go and sort by uh, engagement and that alongside things like the reading time and the word count and the screenshots can give you an idea of pages which are gonna which are not engaging your users very well. So as we scroll along further, the next section we've got is the Majestic data. So I'll open these ones up as well. And these are just the basic Majestic uh, stats. So we've got citation flow, trust flow, external backlinks and referring domains. Um, so looking through these, you'll be able to tell which of your most authoritative pages and which of the pages with the most backlinks and which with the most referring domains. Uh, and if there's any that you, know, you might have expected to have backlinks but haven't. Um, then the next section is the shares. Um, so again, your, your most popular pages from a social perspective. Uh, so some of our blog posts are further down in terms of the amount of traffic they're getting from Google at the moment. Um, but they have got, had more, more social shares. Um, and then if you scroll along, there's, uh, there's three columns for Facebook and there's a total Facebook um, column. So which is just summing these three up. And then if you scroll along a bit further, there's total shares for the URL, um, which is just again summing all of these. So we've got the mobile friendly checks after that, which uh, is something we added to the tool recently um, and was very much requested. Uh, so this uses the uh, mobile friendly API, which is just in beta at the moment. Um, and you can see for our site, I think this should all pass. 
yeah oh there's one that found so right i have to have a look at that and check that because the uh, the way that the mobile friendly um, update works is that you only get that mobile friendly tag uh, per page so if you have a site where the home page is mobile friendly that doesn't necessarily mean that all the other sub pages are also mobile friendly so that's it's really worth checking uh, that all your pages are mobile friendly and this is a quick and easy way to do it um, you do get a bit more data about um, the mobile friendly test uh, the score which is based on these these sort of uh, sub tests uh, which of these columns along here uh, and you can see which of the tests you're failing so it is possible to fail some of the tests some of these smaller tests and still get the mobile friendly tag uh, and it from what from our experience and, and what we've done maybe through testing this is basically based on uh, how extreme the situation is um, so you only fail the links too close together if you've got you know hundreds and hundreds of links on the same page um, that are all close together so uh, we've published stuff on the blog about that to give you a bit more detail um so you can scroll a bit further and then there's the page speed results so this shows that our mobile page speed is pretty poor um and again you've got the the different tests which um which google have in place which you can either pass or fail so it can it will show us quickly which of the which of the different tests we failed and basically that means areas which we can improve on um, after the this is again all of all of the uh, all of the tests that we're failing or passing and then once you scroll further along you'll get the desktop page speed as well so this one looks a little bit better than the mobile one but again it's an area which we can certainly work on and we've effectively got these suggestions of different things which we can do leverage browser caching do gzip compression etc which will help incre incre improve our page speed so there's all the actual nuts and bolts of the uh, page speed tests as well and finally we have the robots data so this will tell you if there are it's a bad example actually because we don't have any um, if you've got any uh, no followed or no index um, robots links and what the canonical link is for each of the pages so obviously I've not done a content audit here um, but what I've done is I've built a content inventory which you could then go through and audit so that's how you do build a content inventory using URL profiler.